Hi everyone, it's Pia. Welcome to my channel, if you're new to my channel. Hi, welcome. Today I wanted to do a video because I haven't done a video in a very long time and I wanted to do one today. This is not a makeup tutorial, it's just more of like a chit chat. I tend to do my makeup and think of things. So instead of keeping those thoughts in my head, I thought I would share them. I wanted to talk about what last year has taught me and how it has helped me develop the person I am today. I feel like life really challenged me and I'm so glad it did because I'm a better person for it. I was far more sensitive when I was younger, but I feel like hardship has really taught me to not get too emotionally attached to things. And instead of jumping into emotion, I can logically figure things out. And I had this mentality that I have no expectations to things. Like I don't ever get my hopes up anymore. I don't form attachment to things. Just because of the past, I know how things feel when they all fall apart. Honestly, it's more of a safety net for me. I do that right at the start of anything, whether that's relationship, friendship, opportunities. I just don't have attachment or expectations don't get me wrong i've been on the extreme side of not having expectations but throughout time i had to find a middle ground because i do feel like the extreme side of not having attachment or expectations you can become a little bit too hard and that can affect relationships and i do believe there was a point in my life where i didn't let anyone in at the time but now it's almost kind of like I'm in that middle ground where I don't have to be so extreme and I am learning to be a little bit more vulnerable or open up a little bit more. I think it's really important to be truthful with yourself and situations. Sometimes the world moves on. People can hurt you and people can do you so wrong and still be able to move on. For me, the only way I was able to move on from things is finding closure within myself. Like. If I can't forgive them, I can't forgive myself. If I still have grudge or anger towards a person, then that only impacts me because I'm the only one bothered about the situation. I think there is a stage and time where you do need to just help yourself. How girls go through breakups. There's so much development as a person when you go through a breakup. I think my number one rule of going through a breakup is just open yourself up to the world even though at the time it feels like it's the end of the world just taking complete advantage of the freedom feel different emotions rekindle friendship on a positive note it is just an opportunity for you to find yourself even more work on yourself whether that's fitness your appearance your well-being your career i don't know what it is but the universe does find a way to bless you with so many good things in your darkest times. I knew that because I experienced it. I did experience a lot of fortune, experiences, opportunities around this time. And I think the key to that is just really opening yourself up to the world. There is definitely beauty to vulnerability. People do get addicted to that type of feeling though. And it's called fight or flight. And it's basically when a human body experiences trauma, it goes into a defense mechanism. Your body senses threat and danger. A traumatic time. For me, it was a breakup. My dad passing away. My body kind of just went into this survival mode. Early stages of humanity when they had to hunt for food. Back then, men had to be more focused. And to be more focused, their eyes needed to be more dilated. Your body finds a way to store temperature so you basically become more of like an animal for certain conditions such as like the cold so the human body naturally does that when it can sense danger or fear and also your body stores food so you become less hungry my body went through that because i was mentally and physically challenged but the advantages of that it made my mind very sharp it made me look so freaking good like i was in my heroin chic era she was skinny why i say that was a good thing because it made me so much more productive i sort of had like this fuel behind me to always want to do more or to progress or to be better i definitely put myself more in different situations which gain more experience and more growth because i really wasn't afraid because i was kind of like an animal 
there was no limit and I had the absolute freedom. I kind of had this mentality of no fear, I have nothing to lose, everything to gain. The only way is up from now. I need to push my boundaries and experience. Your mind and your body just finds a way to make that happen. I told myself what was the things that I've always wanted to do and I said I need to do it. So one day I booked a flight to Turkey and got my boobs done on my own because I opened myself up to the world. I knew that I was going to be okay and I wasn't going to be alone because when you are open to the world, people gravitate towards you so I made lots of new friends. While I was there, I, was, I still managed to do different activities and visit all the different tourist spots. I always found a way to get myself out there to experience new things because that was kind of like my motive. I was able to organise things, I was able to create plans, I was able to be practical, logical, all at the same time because my mind was on fight or flight mode and it was working to its best capacity. But with that, I wasn't able to really feel emotions and I wasn't able to be vulnerable. There was a lot of emotions that I was repressing. Thinking about it now, I'm a lot more cautious about doing things i have to kind of think about it and i kind of need to process things before doing them because i don't really want to make mistakes or i don't want to put myself in situations that could be jeopardizing to my well-being i'm glad i'm able to find myself my, my real self again through becoming something else do you know what i mean i definitely went through my villain era i wouldn't go back to that phase in my life. I think everyone focuses on moving on so much. Even I do, for sure. It's always what's next, whether that's trends, the new beauty standard. Everyone just wants to progress. But I do feel like there needs to be a balance of going back to your roots because you can get lost through it all. What's the point of being something when you don't even know where? it stems from and everything has a beginning i feel like going back to my roots was the final straw the start of the new beginning of becoming a better version of myself last summer i went back to the philippines which i do have a vlog coming out so traveling back to the philippines last year was definitely an eye-opening experience again. I was able to kind of rekindle my relationships with my family. I was able to find closure. If you can't find closure on a certain situation, you will always find closure in another way. Because at the end of the day, closure is just a feeling. You can get closure from anything. So if I can't find answers this way, I'll find answers that way. And I get exactly the same result. The whole purpose of everything was to feel better however you do it as long as you make it to the other side you go for it and if that means you having to hurt people if that means you having to hurt yourself even more try out different things then that is all part of it the last time i went back to the philippines is when i was my past self so there's always been that kind of miscommunication at the start i kind of had this narrative in my head that they didn't accept me at all but when i came back i was greeted with the most warmest embrace and so much love and so much support from my family and i completely forgot how much love i actually had there's just something so special about knowing that there is still love for me at the time where i felt like i was heartbroken and i lost so much love in another way i regained it when i came back from the philippines it really put things into perspective oh what the fuck really changed my mind on what i wanted and what i didn't want and that's when things started to make sense and i started to create different boundaries and different rules and it turns out what i thought i wanted was not what i wanted anymore but that's what i'm trying to say i feel like I endorsed myself in so much experience that I was able to be selective with what I actually wanted in the end and I think you know you've healed when you can say what do I want now what do I deserve what really makes me happy and what doesn't I came back from the Philippines on the 
23rd of August and I had my graduation on the 24th. It was really emotional for me because when my dad passed away around September last year and then the following October I broke up with my ex-boyfriend who I was with for four years. I literally ruled out university. I would literally go into uni, do my work and then go to my ex's house to collect more of my stuff and then straight after I would go to arrange my dad's funeral and it was a lot. So when I came back from the Philippines and I had my graduation it was so emotional because I actually passed. I feel like you never really know how strong you are until being strong is your only choice. So this new phase of my life is a lot different now. I started cutting out dating for a while. I didn't go out on dates. I'm quite happy not needing to be validated by a man. Also, I have changed my friendship group because a lot of my past friends I just grew apart from and that's completely normal. That's completely how it goes. I've had a healthier relationship with food back then i didn't really eat but now i eat um i have been making music throughout all my journey i've released four songs at this moment of everything so uh if you want to listen to that then it's all here on my youtube like i don't want to be an inspiration i just want my music to inspire people do you know what i mean it's not about me it's about the message me and the universe have a really healthy relationship <laughs> Why is that funny? Don't want to speak out. I don't want it to become personal, but through my own experience, I don't really get along with many trans girls. My experiences of having trans friends have been an absolute disaster. Maybe it's because I see parts of myself that I dislike in other trans girls, and, but I don't think it's that. I think it's because I've come to a place of growth. I had this friend, I basically treated her as my sister. During my dark times, um, she reintroduced herself to me. We had previously fallen out over a situation regarding other jealous friends that used her to make me feel less. Introducing someone into a friendship group and then having them not invite you to anything after. And they began to create this narrative to push me away and it did hurt me because i knew that everything was transactional my trans friends could get something out of them and the two jealous so-called friends found a way to devalue me months after when everything was falling apart they found a way to get back into my life they evolved me accepted things like that in the past but at the time i accepted her and she came back into my life and um at the time I was getting back into dating again. But every person that I ever dated, she found a way to communicate with them. Or they found a way to communicate with her. Either way, they did that towards me. They never saw value in me. You don't disrespect your friends like that. You don't go and start speaking to the person that she's speaking to. Not on one occasion, but a few. I let my emotions get to me at the time. And it's funny because all the men that did that to me, with her, to this day, they're still trying to get me back. And it's like, get the gist. Like, can you not get the message that I don't want you back? There are actually like men who would want to just do that so they can regain that control again. I always feel like I'm always right in the end and people don't think I will be right in the end. Time will tell, I am always right. Anyway, when I was friends with this girl, I introduced her to my other friend who was also trans. I thought I made such a perfect friendship because we were all trans and we were all Filipino. Statistically speaking, we should all be match made in heaven, right? I do feel like when you're too similar, it does clash. There were certain things that I believed in, in my morals that I just think shouldn't be crossed and certain boundaries that shouldn't be crossed as much as I tried to compromise the fact that they were trans it doesn't matter whether you're trans or whatever you can still be fucking shit you know I meet a lot of people who are pretty shit because they either 
want to be friends with me for beneficial reasons or they want to be friends with me because they secretly hate me or they want to be friends with me because they want something that I have or they want to know how I do it and I feel like a lot of that my friendship with them was all very transactional on their side that trans friend will call her B and I introduced B to my other trans friend who practically transitioned because of me I was the first person who ever said to her that you do realise that you're trans and you knew it a few years later she transitioned but she's definitely a bottom feeder she's definitely a hyena she's definitely just there for the source so we'll call this girl C B and C but one thing about C is that she just copies everything I do not even like subtly though to a point where it's just become so extreme that it's almost embarrassing um so when i transitioned c decided to transition when i got my lips done c decided to have her lips done when i got a boob job c decided to get a boob job but the thing is this time she went out of her way she made a statement saying that she got her boob job through her own money and not through inheritance money definitely is a shade towards me Bear in mind, I've done nothing wrong with this girl. She just feels the need to attack me all the time because she's just angry at herself, projecting her, all her self-hate towards me because, because I successfully do things and flawlessly do things. And she cannot even fathom how I do it. That's why she always comes to me for resource. And I happen to be that person she wants to be by the looks of things. Whatever I do with my money is my money. It's no one else's business. And for her to make it her business and for her to comment just shows how obsessed she is. I don't want to ruin good news, but I've just come here to deliver the truth. On the 20th of June, I ordered a parcel from PLT and I sent it to my old address, which was my ex-boyfriend's house. This always fucking happens when PLT just randomly logs me out of the app. And every time I log back on, I always forget because it goes back to the default address. Because when I buy something, I just go blah, 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 buy it, bye, bye. Because I just think automatically it does it. So I went to my ex's address and I really wanted this pieces of clothing for my holiday. Me and my friend drove to his house without invitation because obviously I wasn't there to be his friend I wanted my item bitch funnily when I got there C's car C's car C's car C's car C's car C's brum brum Car is outside my ex's house. Did someone say sideline? Like she is someone who's always been in the sideline, and that's why I don't trust these trans bitches. I wasn't even surprised at that point. I was like, of course he was gonna do that, because you know when you're in that mentality where there's no expectations. Of course it was her car, I know it was her car. Um, I know what car she drives. I've been to her house, I know it's her car. I know her registration, it's her car. I'm no genius, but that was her car. <laughs> so anyway, I already knew my, my ex was a fucking cheating lying cunt anyway. So what expectations did I have there? Which makes me feel a little bit... Doesn't really make me feel like anything to be honest. I'm not spoken about this to anyone until now because I'm prepared to talk about it. <laughs> it's only when I got home after my friend dropped me off and I didn't get my parcel. It was so upset because I... <sighs> I went on my phone the next minute I get a follow. A follow. No, no, no. Guess who it was? It was C. She followed me on Instagram in his bed followed me bear in mind he's got a whole whole fucking fiance wife whatever she's probably like out to work thinking she's living such a lovely life but do you know what karma's a bitch they both cheered always to be together 
behind my back. So I was just like, okay, cool, she followed me. And the next minute, she messages me. She messages me, this bitch messages me. I'm like, how transparent can you be to message me? I was literally outside his house. You're in his bed, banged up, and um, you feel the need to message me. She's literally going out of way to try and hurt me at this point. I don't know, I did tell. She literally messaged me with something just to suss things out, to get a conversation, to see what was going on, to see why I was outside his house, blah, blah, blah. But she was like, hey girl, the most fakest thing. Um, we should definitely get a BBL together. What she said, that she had no contact. Have you ever met people like that? It's just like, absolutely no self-worth. And she'll ask me questions like, how do you make so much money? How do you do this? How do you trying to just get resource basically from me? So she can use this resource for, him, for herself, for self gain. Okay guys, this is the final look. I'm really happy with my hair. It's grown so much and it's so healthy. Um, I'm gatekeeping how I get my hair this perfect because i don't want any bitches to copy me i hope you guys were inspired by my words and i hope you guys feel a little bit better about things and i hope i was able to put things in perspective but other than that thank you for watching my video and i will see you all again soon